Okay, today I'm going to show you how to install the Oracle database on your virtual machine that you created in the Oracle virtual box. So first a uh, couple of settings I want to show you before I start the box up. Um, for convenience sake on your network, I would suggest uh, selecting a bridged adapter, which will make it uh, so that you can communicate with your machine uh, via, uh, via various other tools when the time comes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start this virtual machine up that uh, we created as the first extra credit assignment. I'm going to go ahead and click these warning menus as they come up here. All right, uh, first, before we get started with the install of the database software, we're just going to want to do a little bit of housekeeping here to make sure uh, all is well. So probability says that when you fire up your virtual machine, uh, one, you better see an Oracle user or something went wrong with the way that you created your your VM in the first place. But um, you probably won't be able to log into that Oracle user because the password won't be set to anything that you would know. Uh, luckily, you created should have created your own user that's going to have access to the machine, and we can change that password. So I'm just going to log. Uh, I'm just going to log in as my user I created as a part of the software install. And then when I get to this desktop view, I'm just going to right click and select this open in terminal. Now, uh, what I'm going to want to do to change the password for the Oracle user is switch to the root user by typing su for switch user root, uh, giving my password for the root user. And then to change a password, we just type in pass wd and then the username. And um, if I hit enter, I've already changed my username. It'll then give me, uh, ask me what I want the new password to be. And I can set it to whatever I want to. So be sure uh, to uh, do this step because you're going to need to do your install as the Oracle user. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is check the ownership of two uh, directories. So in order to do this, we're going to switch to the top directory. We're going to do an ls for list-l to give us permissions on the directories that are present and what groups and users uh, have permissions to them. So you'll see the, the two directories that we care about for this database install are this imv and this u01. Now you can see I've already switched these directories to be owned by the Oracle user and the DBA group. Uh, but if this isn't the case with your directories that you should have created as a part of the um, as a part of creating your VM, then it's a very simple command for changing this ownership. It's uh, C H O W N for change ownership, and then you're going to type. The username, in this case, will be Oracle, and then you're going to type the group name, in this case, DBA, and then the directory. So INV, and if I hit enter on this, it'll change the ownership to Oracle, and I'll be able to do that list command to confirm that. And then when I want to do the U01 directory, I just do the exact same thing. And uh, as long as those directories are owned by that user group, then your software install should go smoothly. All right, so now that we've taken care of that little bit of housekeeping, we can close this window. Now, uh, just to point out there, I never hit uh, enter on this command because it's already set in here. You would want to hit the enter key and and confirm this ownership, but when you're all done, your uh, INV folder and your UO1 folder should look just like these two with the 
Oracle user and DBA root. So now I'm going to close this terminal because I'm all done in here. And I am going to switch over to my Oracle user. And the way I do that is I'm just going to click and say switch user. And in just a second, it should pop me out of this screen. Patience is a virtue. And then I'm going to go ahead and log in to the Oracle user utilizing the password that I just changed. Okay, one other bit of housekeeping you're want, going to want to do here or your install is surely going to fail is you're going to want to check and see what your host name of your machine is so when you created your virtual machine if you left it as localhost then you're probably not going to have any problems but if you happen to give it a name like I did you're going to need to change your host file so that the Oracle database install doesn't fail. So this is actually a pretty simple operation. We're going to want to switch to the uh, ATC directory, just using cd slash etc. Uh, we're going to switch users to root so that we can actually edit our host file. And then we're going to actually see what our host name of our machine is by typing the host name command. So you can see I've given my virtual machine a name during its creation. And I need to actually insert this into a file that's called hosts. And the way I do that is I'm going to take vi hosts and that's going to call up an editor for this host file. And you'll see that this computer right now is using this file to do an operation what's called loopback. So that 127.0.0.0.1 represents the local machine so that whenever uh, something refers to local host right now, it will route that traffic right back to the machine. So it's a, just a way of uh, a machine being able to resolve the domain or the, the host name of localhost. So we're going to need a way for our machine to uh, resolve its, its own name, and especially when we are dealing with the Oracle database software, because at some point or another during the install process, it picks up that host name, and then if it doesn't have a way to resolve that address, uh, then it won't be able to complete its install correctly. So uh, the way that we edit this file is we just hit I and this insert will come up. I'm going to go ahead and paste that isqa.iaminerd.com uh, hostname that I have for this machine. And then to save this file, I'm just going to hit the escape key. The, uh, colon there and WQ for write and quit. Alright, now that I've done that, I'm actually ready to start my database install. But please uh, don't miss this step or you'll find yourself very frustrated when your database install doesn't go as expected.